With faith as your shield and wrath as your sword, you will only know victory as you walk the path of the righteous. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to The Gamer's Den, with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, bringing you another episode of the Pathfinder War Priest Build Guide. Today, we are digging into the fourth level spell list, and we've got a fair few here today, uh, and remember that all of these spells are mechanically ideal for this particular build, and actually, generally, they're going to work well for most any build of War Priest, since it's a fairly melee-focused class, or at least combat-focused class. But before we get into what exactly I've laid out before you here today, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there and hit that subscribe button and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Join the rest of the alumni in making this storied place ever more famous. Or if you're if you're already a member of such a legendary roster of fine people then go on down there hit the like button and share the video further and farther to help us grow ever more you dashingly awesome people but <laughs> with all of that done and said we'll go ahead and get into the heart of the matter here and look at the spell list to begin with, you're going to want to pick up uh, spells like Blessings of Fervor. Keep this one close at hand on your list because it's a great party buffing spell. Standard action to cast, you get that nice close range of 25 feet plus 5 feet for every two caster levels, and you target one target per level and it will last for one round per level. And you bless your allies with the ability to choose one of these options per round, meaning they can switch it up each and every round. They can add in uh, 30 feet to their speed, stand as a swift action without provoking attacks of opportunity, make an extra attack as part of a full attack action, which they get their full bonuses on, so highest base attack bonus, everything else that's applicable towards uh, hitting the target, they can do all of that. They can also gain a plus two bonus on their attack rolls and a plus two dodge bonus on their armor class and reflex saves. Or they can cast a single spell a second level or lower as if it were an enlarged, extended, silent, or still spell. Pretty handy all the way around there, though by the time you're casting these spells, if they have access to second or lower level spells, they may not go for that a whole lot. Maybe paladins or rangers could. They will see the most benefit out of this. Same with bards. So again, really handy class buffing spell there and the fact that you can choose between these different options gives your party a lot of tactical flexibility out of this one spell but for, uh, for something that will let you buff yourself up quite a bit we go to divine power it's a standard action cast you target yourself and it lasts one round per level you call upon your deity's power to gain might in combat. This gives you a plus one bonus for every three caster levels you have, maxing out at a plus six. And this adds to your attack, damage, strength checks, and strength related skill checks. Will also give you one temporary hit point per caster level. On a full attack, you make an, att an extra attack at your highest base attack bonus. It doesn't stack with uh, haste effects or weapons of speed, so anything that will speed you up, uh, similarly to the haste spell, will not stack with this. But the fact that this essentially gives you most of the benefits uh, that you want out of a haste spell, on top of... Uh, bonuses to attack damage and all these different skill checks and temporary hit points make this a buffing spell you do not want to miss out on this puts you on par with your um, with all the other martial classes that have that full base attack bonus progression this is really 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 great to have this will probably be your go-to standard pre-fight buff every single uh, for every single encounter but then, one that's not a buff, more of an enemy debuffing spell, it's a Dimensional Anchor. It's a great spell no matter whose class spell list it pops up on. It's a standard action to cast, a nice generous medium range for 100 feet plus 10 feet for every caster level. It's a ray effect, so you have to make a ranged touch attack with it, and it lasts for an incredible one minute per level, with no saving throw involved. 
You make a ranged touch attack against a target as you fire a green ray from your hand. Any creature struck is blocked from using the following. Astral Projection, Blink, Dimension Door, Ethereal Jaunt, Ethereal Nisk, Gate, Maze, Planar Shift, Shadow Walk, Teleport, and any other similar abilities that would let them blink or move around the room. Any kind of teleportation or travel magic in this fashion is blocked off. This is great for those enemies that like to make a quick getaway. Lots of devils, demons, numerous other creatures, uh, lots of shadow creatures have shadow walk or some fashion of uh, traveling around instantaneously through two different points. So being able to lock them down and in place and teach them what a bad mistake it was to get up close and personal with you, this is a great, great spell. This is a handy way for keeping those dangerous spellcasters locked in place so that you and your party have a much, much better chance at finishing them off. But then going on from there, another buff is Freedom of Movement. It's a standard action to cast, touch range, and it affects the target touch, probably yourself given how poor your reflex saves are, but it's handy for any of your party members. It lasts 10 minutes per level, so you can cast this before going into a dungeon, castle, whatever fortress or on the battlefield, and be comfortably covered for the entirety of the fight through multiple encounters. You enable a creature you touch to move and attack normally for the duration of, of the spell, even under effects that would impede movement, web, slow, rough terrain, etc. All combat maneuver checks made to grapple fail. The subject also automatically wins any attempts to escape restraints or pins. If you're underwater, this will even allow you to attack normally underwater as if you were just swinging your weapon through air so there's no impediment for anything like this it does not allow you to breathe water you'll need some other effect to uh, keep yourself alive in that instance but this will still be a handy buff protection spell something that allows you to operate normally throughout an encounter where a dm might be throwing unusual terrain or difficulties at you and then we have a very interesting spell here, Hallucinogenic Smoke. I really like this one. It's a standard action cast. You can only target yourself last three rounds per level or until discharged. Smoke seeps from your mouth, nose, and eyes. When you cast it, you spew smoke in a 30-foot cone as a standard action. Each living creature in that cone must make a fortitude save or be nauseated for one round per your caster level. If they succeed, the creature is instead sickened for 1d4 rounds, so even on a successful save, they still catch a debuff. It doesn't last as long, it's that 1d4 round variable, but that's still great to have in your back pocket there. You know, this uh, there's very few downsides to using this spell. The only main drawback to it is it has to target living creatures. So constructs, undead, they're not going to be affected by this. And as a handy kicker, if you cast Augury during the duration, you cast this as if you were five levels higher for the purposes of determining meaningful replies. You also know if a nothing result is due to a failed or successful Augury spell. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing Augury right, I apologize if I'm not, let me know in the comments down below. I've only ever read that word, never heard it spoken before. And then the final spell here is one that is an example of something that's not really all that handy. It's going to very, very rarely come up for you. It's Soothe Construct. It's a standard action to cast. It's a close range spell, so 25 feet plus 5 feet for every two caster levels, and you can target one construct with it. You reduce the chance of a construct going berserk by 1d4% per caster level, so you roll a 1d4 for every caster level, and the total is the uh, percentage amount that you reduce the Berserk chances by. If you cast this on a Berserk construct, you may roll a d percentile, percentile dice to return it to a non-Berserk state. So this can be a very thematic spell, but I even don't, I don't even like it for those purposes because at least in my experience, crafting constructs does not come up really all that much. I've only ever played 
two separate sessions, uh, d different campaigns where that came up at all, crafting constructs. And even then, the Berserk Chance never really was that much of a worry because by the time the constructs went berserk, the party was well away from them and the construct was just losing its mind, attacking everybody else. And that was the point of the constructs. So, really, this probably won't come up a whole lot, but given that you're a divine spellcaster, it's easy enough to swap things out. It's not like you have uh, uh, spent or wasted any time trying to learn the spell like, say, a wizard might, but still, this one's probably not going to come up too terribly much. If you know that you're going to be dealing with constructs, even then this may not be all that handy, but maybe it's useful as a scroll, or a couple of scrolls. But don't have this on your regular spell list. Go with any of the other spells listed here. But what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Uh, if, did you like this video? Are there spells that you would add in? Or do you think some of these uh, things that I've rated as excellent spells would actually never see the light of day if you were playing a war priest? Go on down to the comments and let's talk it out. Or, if you enjoyed today's video and you've been enjoying other content, go on down there and hit that subscribe button like I said before and be a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. And please remember to share the video far and wide so the the discussion can reach further and further. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.